alone I know you're wrong but I can't prove it I'll let you find out on your own Topes. Okay, I need a favour. Right. It's pretty massive. Don't have any money. When have I ever asked you for money? <laughs> so I'd be massive. I don't want your money. Good, because I haven't got any. I know. Okay, listen. Go on. Is Lisa in? Is Lee It's two o'clock in the morning, Tobes. She's in bed. How is she? How is she? How's she doing? She's asleep. You know, with the bump and... We're going on about Tobes. What do you need? Spit it out. I need you to fill my balls. Please. What? I need a second opinion. What? Just a little something no, here. I need you to... go and see a doctor, man! Well, I can't. Why not? They'll be closed. Well, now, yeah, but... I've been going to the same one since we were six. Doctor is up. Yeah, I, I can't just... He's all right. He used to give me stickers for being good. I can't drop my pants in front of him, can I? <laughs> now I might give you two stickers. Yes. Sorry. Please. <sighs> right, you want me to... Fill your balls. I don't want you to, but what other choice do I have? Dr. Azard. Please, Jess, you've seen them before. Across the room in showers, yeah. Remember when your brother puts a fishing rod oh, to your no. foot? Oh, no, don't try and compare that. I had to take it and no, back no, to the hospital. Please, Jess. Oh, this is a living nightmare. Please, it'll take two seconds. That's oh, all you're getting. Tina, 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 Tina. There's something on my mind. Won't somebody please, please tell me what's wrong? What you said? Hey, hey, hey! Oh, oh, oh! He does, and he's such a good man. Five o'clock, Northern Line. I'm trying to read an article about the word feminist. I try to engage, but then I catch the eye of an attractive looking man. Ooh. Ooh. He is attractive when he holds his paper up to here. It all gets a bit rodenty from the nose down but good enough for some casual eye-fucking on the tube. He looks down, I look down, then we both look up at the same time. <laughs> Little giggle. Other passengers in the carriage have begun to take notice, charmed by the interaction. Oh, it's revolting. Do you know what your trouble is, man? Your white skin. You think it give you the right to lord over a black man. But do you know what that make you? White. That's all, man. White. No better, no worse than me. We both just finished fighting a war for a better world we want to see. And still, after all that we suffer together, you want to tell me that I'm worthless and you're not? I'm to be a servant, you're to be the master for all time because you're white? No, stop this, man. We can work together, Mr. Bly. We both want the same thing. Decent to him, some, some work and some self-respect and some love. We can work together, you see, man? Else we're going to keep on fighting each other till the end. Just fighting and fighting. Then what? Hi! Oh, 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 no, oh don't, my, don't, oh. don't do that! Oh, I fucked the olives. Uh, not literally. Uh, I hasten to add. <laughs> chair or bonquette? What? I uh, went for chairs, but would you have preferred a bonquette? Oh no, chair. Chair's fine, yeah. <laughs> Funny words. Bonquette. <laughs> <laughs> not really. 
It's just French. Bon cat. <laughs> it's just French. <sighs> Do I have something on my face? Oh, no, 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 no. You just look gorgeous. Oh, thanks. You look, you look quite nice as well. Oh, oh are you getting any drinks? Uh, yeah, sure. I'd love a vodka and tonic. Is that a double? Oh, God, is it too reckless? Oh, proceed for madam. <laughs> and for you? Uh, I'll stick with the wine for now. Grazie. <laughs> Feel a real warm from the man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fancy restaurant, rude waiter, is the law. Do you think it's fancy? Yeah, quite fancy. Yes. Uh, do you know what you want yet? Um, a minute steak looks good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or is that a minute steak? <laughs> As in, is it really cooked for 60 seconds or is it a really small steak? <laughs> I'm sure you can check when you order. <laughs> what about you? Pen for your thoughts. <laughs> Nothing I can say Except sometimes you see everything you wanted And sometimes you see everything you wish you had And it's right there, right there, right there in front of you And you want to believe it's true So you make it true And you think Maybe everybody wants it, needs it a little bit too. You're dead meat, mate. I do not want him to spare me because of some fucking peace pact. I want him to acknowledge that his anger's unfucking justified. I want to acknowledge that he who lives by the sword fucking dies by it, Tommy. So what? He's taking your boy, has he? Right? Is he taking your boy? And what fucking line am I supposed to have crossed? How many fathers, right? How many sons, yeah, have you cut, killed, murdered, fucking butchered? Just innocent and guilty, just sent them straight to fucking hell, ain't ya? Just like me! And you are going to sit there judging me. You sitting there. If you're going to pull that trigger, mate, you're going to pull it for a fucking honourable reason. Like an honourable man. Not like some civilian who doesn't understand the wicked way of our world, mate. Knock need. And coughing like hags. We curse through sludge. Until on the Ordnan flayers we turned our backs, and towards our distant rest we began to trudge. Men had marched asleep. Many had lost their boots but limped on, and bloodshot. All was lame. All went quiet. We was deaf. Even to the sound of those gas shells dropping softly behind us. Gas. Gas! Quick, boys! When ecstasy are fumbling and fitting with clumsy helmets just in time, but still, there was someone who was yelling out and stumbling and floundering like a man in fire or lime. Dim through the misty panes of thick green light, as if under a green sea I could see him. Drowning. In all of my sleepless dreams, he plunges for me. Choking. Guttering. Drowning.
It was something he said, just one little thing. The thought left a scar, the words left a sting. Those words are the walls that still hold me in, and they keep building and building and building and building and don't fall. I'm finding me feet. Their shoes to be filled, but this wall is harder to beat when it's one you help build. Over the wall, over the wall, I see my future standing tall. So I'll keep climbing and 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 climbing this wall in my head. This wall in my head. This wall in my head. There's no one about, there's no one watching me. I tell you, in the army, someone's always watching you. Someone always knows where you are, but just at this moment, no one does. When I read you on the cavalry, someone will always know where I am again. So shall I, shall I stay with you? That's a good plan, yeah? We did good with this ambulance car, haven't we? It's an important job. What use am I in the fighting if I'm a coward? Cavalry has no use in this war, not with machine guns, barbed wire and trenches. They can win this war without useless me. The raven himself is hoarse, that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Come, you spirits, that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here, and fill me from the crown to the toad top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop up the access and passage to remorse that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose nor keep peace between the effect and it come to my women's breasts and take my milk for gall you murdering ministers wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief come thick night and pull me in the dunnest smoke of hell that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. It is done. The more my wrong, the more his spite appears. What? Did he marry me to famish me? Beggars that come unto my father's door upon entreaty have a present arms. If not, they meet with charity elsewhere. But I, who never knew how to entreat, nor never needed that I should entreat, am starved for meat, giddy for lack of sleep, with oaths kept raking and brawlings fed. And that which spites me more than all these wants. He does under name, perfect love. And who should say if I should sleep or eat? It's where deadly sickness or else present death. I prithee, go and get some repast. I care not what so be it, wholesome food.
You say you're not a racist, Kate, but you are. Wait, don't say a word, you are. We see your father every week without fail, but months could go past without seeing anyone from my family and you don't even notice. You said it yourself, we've never had any black friends in all the time that we've known each other and up until recently, you didn't notice that either. Worst of all though, Kate, was the way that you reacted to Amani when you finally got close to a real black woman like the wife of a plantation owner, scared a husband might seek favour from his slave. <laughs> I was the whitest black man you'd ever met, wasn't I, Kate? Yeah, your father wouldn't have it any other way. It's not my host to sit there having the most sweet wench. There's the honey of Hebla, my old lad of the castle. And there's not a buff jerk in the most sweet robe of Durrance. <laughs> Didn't I quips and quiddities? Uh, what a plague am I to do with a buff jerkin? Why, what a pox have I to do with my hostess of the tavern? Well, thou hast called her to a reckoning many a time, and after... Did I ever call for thee to pay thy part? No. Mm. I'll give thee thy due, thy hath paid all there. Yea, and elsewhere, so far as my coin would stretch, and word would not have used my credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and so used it that were it not here apparent that thou art heir apparent. But I prithee, sweet wag, will there be gallows standing in England when thou art king? And resolution thus fubbed as it is with the rusty curb of the old father antic, the law. Do not thou, when thou art king, Hang a thief. No. <laughs> Thou shalt. Everybody knows. <laughs> what fire is in mine ears? Can this be true? Stand I condemned for pride and scorn so much? <sighs> Contempt, farewell, and maiden pride adieu. No glory lives behind the back of such. And Benedict love on. I will requite thee, taming my wild heart to thy loving hand, if thou dost love. My kindness shall incite thee to bind our loves up in a holy band. For others say thou dost deserve, and I believe it better than reporting thee. Left mouth draws all for a group portrait. None of us is moving. I am finding myself the stillest of us, all for I am thinking, what art? Hundreds of years hence, people will penetrate this tomb, and they will say, Look, it's a painted sky with jeweled stars, the rivers of quicksilver, the gates, and that must be the bronze army. What art? Oh, and look, in the middle here, these skeletons wrapped in fine clothing. This must be the women. What were they doing here? And one of them will touch it and we will fall to dust and he will say, Oh, no, I was mistaken. It is nothing and turn back to the beautiful gold and silver gate. So I keep still. You say I'm what you need, all you want, we both agree. This is the place for me. I'm 
I'm finally where I'm meant to be Then he starts saying all this stuff He cares so much, he calls me love He says we have this connection I guess it's not so different Cause all you wanna do, all you wanna do baby is touch me, love me, can't get enough see you can't wait a second more to get my car set on the floor Playtime's over The only thing, the only thing, the only thing you want to do is Baby? Yeah. Baby? Yes. Can we wait? Can we what? Can we wait? Until what? Until we get back to the hotel. Are you serious? I don't mind the kissing. <laughs> you are so funny. I, I don't want to do this outside. Why not? It's uncomfortable. Doesn't need to be. And it's unhygienic. Oh, fuck's sake. Is it fuck unhygienic? It is. Compared to some of the places you've told me about. Stephen. Compared to the what was it? Mm. The Red Lion in Bradford. You're calling Durham Cathedral unhygienic. What's the matter? Nothing's the matter. Really? Really? Really, really? Really, really? Oh, well, you could have fucking fooled me. Hey, done. It's just... What? It's a bit odd. What is? You can't have sex in Durham Cathedral. <laughs> Why not? The fucking venerable Bede is in there. Yeah, the first historian in the English language. I would feel tremendously self-conscious. <sighs> tremendously self-conscious? Have you heard yourself speak? You're just... Restless. Yeah, I fucking am. Restless sex is always a bit angry, and angry sex is ooh, always a bit shit. <sighs> Do I disgust you when you look at me? Is that it? Push your drinks around the world, see how beautiful men can be, then run back to this shitty shell of a boy. You've done your time now, Andy, mate. No one will blame you. You have no idea what you're talking about. Don't I? Then look me in the eye and tell me you'll never leave me. Look me in the eye and tell me you'll never leave me. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions and spirits do give thee fivefold blazon. Not too fast. Soft, soft. Even so quickly may one catch the plague. Methinks I feel this use perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eyes. Well, let it be. Cecil, I've been thinking about space and how it's nothing and how a point is just a single spot within the nothing and an angle just where two nothings meet. But all of these things combined in an object of points and angles that can take up actual space and how that object becomes something made of nothing within nothing. And an object can be uh, a wall, a floor, a roof, uh, a bed, a home. I, I was also thinking that a home is, is just a group of objects connected by a shared experience of time. A home is, scientifically speaking, speaking from the point of view of mere facts and, and logic, what with, with, with science and stuff. I was just thinking that maybe it was time for us to build a home together. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Now then. Now then what? Now then what? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you don't, don't you? No, I don't, so shut up. I suppose you don't know. You mucked up the exit. It wasn't my fault. Whose fault was it then? Mussolini's. Funny, hey? I suppose you didn't drop your prop, did you? And having dropped it, you didn't have to go back for it, leaving me to prance off all by myself. Who didn't you are? Rebler. The exit was too quick. It was the same as it's always been. It was too quick. I tell you, it's been too quick this whole week. The whole number's too quick. Bert Bentley takes that number at the same tempo as he's always done. You and your Bert Bentley. Just because he stands you a Welsh Reb at the Queen's, you think he's God Almighty. Bert Bentley is the best conductor in the north of England, and <laughs> you won't make any mistake about it. Best conductor, my foot. I suppose you think that it's funny to see us leap about the stage like greyhounds. <laughs> if you're a greyhound, I'm Fred Astaire. Oh, you're Fred Astaire, all right. <laughs> With a bit of Pavlova mixed in. You're wonderful, you are. Nothing you can't do except behave like a gentleman. <laughs> oh, you expect me to behave <sighs> like a gentleman, do you? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one coming from you. Oh, shut up. You make me tired. I make you tired. I suppose it was me that mucked up the exit. I suppose it was me that dropped the bloody telescope. Now look here, George Pepper. Stop George Peppering me. Why can't you admit when you're wrong? You messed up the exit. Nobody else did. You did. Well, what if I did? I didn't do it on purpose. It was an accident. It doesn't matter how you did it or why you did it. You did it. All right. I did it. Well. Do it again then. How am I then a villain to counsel Cassio to this parallel course, directly to his good? Divinity of hell! When devils will the blackest sins put on, they do suggest at first with heavenly shows as I do now. For whilst this honest fool plies Desdemona to repair his fortune, and she for him pleads strongly to the moor. I'll pour this pestilence into his ear that she appeals him from her body's lust. And by as much she strives to do him good, she'll undo her credit with the more. So, will I turn her virtue into pitch? And out of her own credit, make the net that shall emnish them all. Are you a god? Would you create me new? Oh, transform me then into your power, I'll yield. But if that I am I, then well I know your weeping sister is no wife of mine. Nor to her bed no homage do I owe. Far more, far more to you do I decline. Oh, train me not, sweet mermaid, with thy note to drown me in thy sister's flood of tears. Sing. Siren, for thyself and I will dote, spread o'er the silver waves thy golden hair, and as a bed I'll take them in their lie, and in this glorious supposition think he gains by death that has such means to die. Oh, let love, being light, be drowned if she sink. You've got that porno look in your eyes. I can't help the way I look. It scares me. Really? No, but yeah, a little bit. Do you feel this a lot? No, 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 But you no. mentioned it before, it's one of your things. <laughs> things? One of my things? Look, sometimes I get this animal, you know, this lust, and I want to hurt oh. you a little bit, make <laughs> you scream. <laughs> no, baby. I'm you want it. I mean, sometimes I do, but... Oh, I want to get inside you so much, I want to split you open and split uh, your legs. Okay, that's great. Oh, in the right context, that is great. But do you not ever think about what the thing means, you know, beyond the moment? Honestly, I'm just thinking about the moment. Okay. 
อันนี้ดักมุมมาฟิงกันมาฮันโอเคโอเค You're so scrimmish about this stuff, man. <laughs> I'm not. I just, I just want connection. Look, sometimes that look you do, oh, it is sexy, and the weight of you and your shoulders, the danger. What danger? <laughs> look, I'm just trying to be honest here, okay? It's just sometimes it looks like. You're gonna hack off my limbs, bash my teeth in, put me in bin bags, and bury me in the woods. Fucking hell! Hi. In exactly 45 days from now, you and I are gonna meet, and we're gonna fall in love. We're gonna get married. We're gonna have two kids. And we're gonna love them and each other so much. All that is just 45 days away, but I'm here now. I, I guess because I want those extra 45 days with you. I want every one of them. And if I can't have them, I'll have the 45 seconds where your boyfriend comes and punches me in the face because I love you. I'm always going to love you until the end of my days and beyond. For the first time in ages. I wake up and don't hate it. I guess I found some peace. Through the day to the evening, without shouting and screaming, something new to me. Alone without being lonely, getting back to the old me. Good morning. Shh. What? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Did someone say something's wrong? No, I just took an educated guess. Are you okay? No, something's wrong. What? We. Is anyone else here? Do you see anyone? No. Then, by deductive reasoning, I'd say we're alone. Now, what is the matter with you? I'm having a slight problem with the interrogation. <sighs> I knew it. Is that little rat refusing to talk? Well, yes. What do you mean, yes and no? Did he talk or not? I got him to confess, told him that if he testified against Robert, would cut him a deal. Then... So did he sign the confession? Yes and no. He only signed his first name. I know that. Why not his last? Because he can't. He can't or he won't? He can't. Why not? He's... <laughs> dead. What do you mean? He's dead. I mean, he's dead. He stopped breathing. He ceased to exist. Oh, please tell me you're making this up. I wish I was. I cannot believe you killed our witness. I didn't kill him. He just died. Nobody just dies. Well, he did. Well, what happened? I'm not sure. We were talking. He agreed to everything. Then he asked me for a glass of water, and I told him as soon as the confession was signed. He started signing it, grabbed his chest, and then bam! <laughs> kneeled over. Maybe I should have given him the glass of water first. Oh, I really don't think that would have made much of a difference. You figured this out all by yourself? This is no time to be a smarty pants considering you're the one that killed him. I didn't kill him. Oh, no matter what the point is. <sighs> he is dead. Okay. okay. Now, does anybody else know about this? No. Good. <laughs> Let's keep it that way. Okay. Yo sé que te preocupas. No te quiero ofender, but you don't know what it's like to be shunned by your own government. You see, it is really my government, my constitution, my declaration of independence. It was the government I was taught to respect. Last spring, I couldn't take it anymore. I was tired. My brain was exhausted from fighting, I guess. You go to sleep saying, tomorrow I'm going to fight. You wake up and say it again. Because if you don't, you go crazy worrying about who's going to stop you in the streets. O si algún desconocido racista decide entregarte al Sheriff Joe. Sir, so spare your threats. The bug which you would fright me with, I seek. To me, can life be no commodity? 
the crowns and comfort of my life, your favour. I do give loss, for I do feel it gone, but know not how it went. Now, my liege, tell me what blessings I have here alive that I should fear to die. Therefore proceed. But yet hear this. Mistake me not, no life. I prize it not a straw, but for mine honour, which I would free if I shall be condemned. Upon surmises all proof sleeping else. Your honours all. I refer me to the oracle. Apollo, be my judge. Daddy's moving forward. Daddy didn't lose a mom. Mama, won't you send a sign? I'm running out of hope and time. A plague of mice, a lightning strike, or drop a nuclear bomb. No more playing daddy's games. I'll go insane if things don't change. Whatever it takes to make him say your name, dead mom. Do you think she's... What? I would explain it. <laughs> no. She might be. She's, she's fucking not, you... Daddy. <laughs> Cock. Daddy. Cock. Daddy, will you play with me? <laughs> the fuck old are you? <laughs> Please, mummy. Why is daddy doing that with another man? If you don't stop until you fucking start counting to ten, I'm going to kick you until you're out of blood. I'll kick you until your fucking blood runs out. <laughs> oh, talk. You wouldn't kick, you wouldn't do a thing. You try to, yes, you'd intend to, like everything else, but I'm sure your son will come to feel the exact same way as you. There is no son. Don't you ever, there's no baby, so... <laughs> you seem so sure, but you never mentioned a condom in your statement. When, when we did, we'd obviously... And was she good looking? She's... A hot, wet, tight fuck. Stop it. Tall? A bit. Face? Yeah. Small, petite things, that's what you like in girls, is it? No! No! <laughs> Plus it's over now, so it doesn't even matter. And she was tall, not, not petite. She was more like a man, really. What? She's quite manly, I suppose. Is that supposed to make me feel better? Soften the blow that she was manly? Yeah. You, you have no idea. This is my school. Why is it your school? Why am I always in the wrong? Why do I have to listen to you when you've got zero to say? Is it because I'm young? <laughs> All my life I've been young, so I never get a turn? This school is lost, if you ask me. You're lost, but everybody talks to me like I'm the one, you know, I should change. Why should I change? I've never even gotten to find out who I am and you want me to change? That's crazy. You tell me I'm bad before I even get to be anything. What the hell is that, original sin or something? Why are you the headmaster and I'm the student? You understand? Why do I have to earn your respect, but you don't have to earn mine? What is that? It's you that wants DA before you even start. But when I say I want the same thing, I'm nuts. Right? I beg your pardon, Gwendolyn. Did you say Ernest? Yes. Ah, but it is not Mr. Ernest Wervin who is my guardian. It's his elder brother. Ernest never mentioned to me he had a brother. I'm sorry to say they've not been in good terms for a long time. Now that I think of it, I don't recall any man mentioning his brother. <laughs> Cecily, you have lifted a load from my mind, though you are quite, quite sure it is not Mr. Ernest Worthing who is your guardian. Quite sure. In fact, I, 
I'm going to be his. I beg your pardon? There's no reason why I should keep it a secret to you, dear Gwendolyn. Mr. Ernest Worthing and I are engaged to be married. I'm afraid there must be some slight error. Mr. Ernest Worthing is engaged to me. I'm afraid you must be under some misconception. And has proposed to me exactly 10 minutes ago. He asked me to be his wife yesterday afternoon at 5.30. I'm sorry, Cecily, I'm afraid I have the prior claim. It would distress me more than I could tell you, Gwendolyn, if it were to cause you any anguish. But since Anne has proposed to you, he's clearly changed his mind. <laughs> if my poor fellow has been entrapped into any foolish promise, I shall rescue him at once and with a firm hand. <laughs> Whatever unfortunate entanglement my dear boy may have gotten into, I will never reproach him with it once we're married. Do you allude to me as an entanglement, Miss Cardrew? You are presumptuous. Do you suggest, Miss Fairfax, that I entrapped Ernest into an engagement? How dare you? When I see a spade, I call it a spade. <laughs> I have never seen a spade. It is obvious that our social spheres have been widely different. No! Nobody's hanging themselves, Willie. I just ran down 11 flights of stairs with a pen in my hand and suddenly I stopped. Do you hear this? I stopped in the middle of the office. Do you hear this? When I stood still in that building, I saw the sky. I saw the things that I love most in the world. The work, the food, the time just to sit and smoke. I looked at this pen in my hand and I thought, why am I grabbing this? Why am I trying to become something I do not want to be? Why am I in this office making a contemptuous begging fool of myself when all I want is right out there, waiting for the minute for me to say I know who I am? Why can't I say that? Willie! Get into bed. I want to turn the light Hang out. Hang on. Just take your fucking clothes off. I'm not looking. Yes, you are. No one wants to look at your disgusting body, okay? Why do you hate me? I don't hate you. You're just incredibly annoying. <sighs> Mom says it's hard for you because for a long time there was just you. And then I came along. You had to share the attention with me. Well, Mom's an idiot. I never got all the attention. Her work did. She pulled me off on babysitters most of the time. Is that why you hate her? No, I hate her because she's a fake. No, she's not. Please, all she cares about is what other people think. <laughs> well, if that's true, then um, why did she come to my parents' evening in that hat? Hmm? It's that ridiculous hat. Why do you think? For attention. She does everything for attention. She's mental. <laughs> like mother, like daughter then. You know, um, some people might say you wear that onesie all the time for attention. Hardly. Oh, look at me! I'm a kitten! Me, 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 me! I am not a kitten. I'm a polar bear, you fool. And this onesie means the opposite. It's my camouflage. How come you don't just get a job? I had a job. But you didn't like it. I don't like life. Maybe you need a goal. What's your goal? To wear my onesie till I die. Don't judge my goal. I'm not. It's just, I think, maybe you need to blog about it. I don't want to be famous. I've been famous. It's shit. It made me want to kill myself. Oh, you can't say that. Oh, why not? Uh, because of Granny Wilde. Oh my God, Bridget, shut up. I can say what I want, and you can't call someone you never met Granny. Why are you such a twat? <gasps> well, I'm the one claiming to be famous. You know what I mean. Dick, get into bed. <sighs> <sighs> Thou speakest aright. I am that merry wonder of the night. I jest to Oberon and I make him smile when I, a fat and bean fed horse, beguile <laughs> in the likeness of a filly foal. 
And sometimes lurk I in a gossip's bowl, in the very likeness of a boiled crab. And when she drinks against her lip, I bob, and down her with a dewlap pour the ale. My life, my whole life, take it and do with it what you will. I love you. I love you like I've never loved any living thing. From the moment I've met you, I've loved you. I've loved you blindly, madly, adoringly. You did not know it then, you know it now. Leave this house tonight. I won't tell you that the world matters nothing. The voice, the society, they matter a great deal. But there are moments when one has to choose. You have that moment now. Choose, my love, choose. Don't you see? Don't you see you've made me nice? I worry that you open that box and then ask me to marry you and then I'll just nicely say yes and then I will be nice for the rest of my life. I'll be singing Kumbaya for the rest of my days. And then I'll give back to the community, to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, to the Salvation Army and I might do it anonymously. Please, for the love of God, the world already has millions of nice people and it does not need me too. I am a bitch. And I want to stay that way. <laughs> Please, stop. No, I'm begging you. I'm getting down on my knees. Please, will you not marry me? Cause when the villains fall, the kingdoms never weep No one lights a candle to remember No, no one mourns at all when they lay them down to sleep So don't tell me that I didn't have it right Don't tell me that it wasn't black and white after all you put me through Don't say it wasn't true That you were not the monster That I knew